Corrosion inhibitors are chemical admixtures that are added to concrete to limit the corrosion of steel reinforcement. Commercially available corrosion inhibitors include calcium nitrate, sodium nitrate, dimethylene, dimethyl, dimethyl ethanolamine, armines, phosphates, and ester amines. Erosion, corrosion inhibiting admixtures chemically arrest the corrosion reaction and reinstate the passive layer which provides protection to the steel. Increased chloride levels require increased levels of nitrate, nitrite to stop corrosion. Organic inhibitors based on a com combination of amines and esters in a water medium act in two ways that result in an increase in the time of corrosion and initiation and a decrease in the rate of corrosion once it has started. Cathodic inhibitors react with the steel surface to interfere with reduction of oxygen. Shrinkage reducing admixtures or SRAs introduced in the 1980s have potential uses on in bridge decks, critical floor slabs, and buildings where cracks, curling, and warping must be minimized for durability or aesthetic reasons. Propylene glycol and polyoxyalkylene alkyl, alkyl either have been used as shrinkage reducers. Drying shrinkage reduction between 25% and 50% have been demonstrated in laboratory tests. These admixtures have negligible effects on slump, but can impact air content and may possibly require an increase in the dose of air and training admixtures to activate a target air content. A delay in time of set and slower bleed rate may also result from the use of SRAs. Because of their effectiveness in reducing drying shrinkage, SRAs are also generally effective in reducing curling and cracking in slabs. Water can enter concrete through two primary mechanisms. Capillary absorption under non-hydrostatic conditions, often referred to as wicking, and the direct ingress of water under pressure. Considering these two mechanisms of water ingress, permeability reducing admixtures or PRAs can be divided into two categories permeability reducing admixture non hydrostatic PRAN and permeability reducing admixtures hydrostatic PRA permeability reducing admixtures that are non hydrostatic have traditionally been referred to as a as damp proofers PRANs give concrete a water repellent property and they provide reduced absorption. Common materials include soaps such as stearates and other long chain fatty acids or other derivatives as well as petroleum products. Hydrostatic permeability reducing admixtures have often been referred to as waterproofers although permeability reducing admixtures for hydrostatic conditions is more technically correct a more technically correct term pros contain materials that act to block the pores and capillaries in concrete products usually consist of hydrophilic crystalline materials that react in concrete to produce pore blocking deposits or polymeric materials that coalesce in the concrete's pores. Permeability reducing admixtures will not correct for a poorly designed concrete mixture. Lithium based components when used in sufficient quantity are capable of inhibiting damage due to alkali silica reactivity at ASR. ASR gel has a great capacity to absorb moisture from within the concrete pores. If lithium nitrate is used as an admixture, the pore solution will contain lithium and nitrate ions in addition to sodium, potassium, and hydro hydroxyl ions. 
the resulting lithium bearing reaction product does not have the same propensity to absorb water and expand. Natural and synthetic materials are used to color concrete for aesthetic and safety reasons. Pigments used in amounts less than 6% generally do not affect concrete properties. Generally, the amount of pigments used in concrete should not exceed 10% by weight of the cement. Before a coloring admixture is used on a project, it should be tested for color fa fastness in direct sunlight and autoclaving, chemical stability in cement, and effects on concrete properties. To avoid color distortions, calcium chloride should not be used with pigments. There are a variety of admixtures on the market, each with a particular niche pur purpose. Pumping aids are added to concrete mixtures to improve pumpability. Pumping aids are not a cure-all. They are best used to make marginally pumpable concrete more pumpable. Bonding admixtures are added to Portland cement mixtures to increase the bond strength between old and new concrete. Bonding agents should not be confused with bonding admixtures. Bonding, bonding agents are applied to existing concrete surfaces immediately before the new concrete is placed. Grouting admixtures alter the properties of grout for specific applications. Aluminum powder and other gas forming materials are sometimes added to concrete and grout to cause an expansion of the mixture prior to hardening. Air detraining admixtures reduce the air content in concrete. Bacteria and fungal growth on concrete surfaces or in hardened concrete may par partially control may be partially controlled through the use of fungicidal, germicidal, and insecticidal admixtures. Viscosity modifying admixtures increase the viscosity of the mixture resulting in increased thexotropy and resistance to segregation. Fresh concrete problems of varying degrees of severity are encountered as a result of cement admixture incompatibility and and incompatibility between admixtures. Incompatibility between supplementary cement cementing materials and admixtures or cements can also occur. Slump loss, air loss, early stiffness, and other factors affecting fresh concrete properties can result from incompatibilities. While these problems primarily affect the plastic state performance of concrete, long-term hardened concrete performance may also be adversely affected. When incompatibility is encountered, it can often be solved by changing the admixture dosage rate or the sequence of addition to the, to the mixture. Some incompa incompatibility issues may be solved by modifying the composition of the cement or modifying the composition of the admixture. If the water reduc reduction achieved using an admixture is less than expected based on previous experience with the same admixture, this may be caused by the composition of the cementaceous materials, the presence of other set control admixture, the temperature of the concrete, clay minerals in the aggregates, and the dose of the admixture itself. Slump loss can often be offset by delaying the time of addition of the admixture. Incompatibility between some high-range water reducers and cementing materials can result in very rapid losses in workability shortly after the mixing. While this can often be attributed to the temperature of the concrete, the reactivity of the cement and the continuous availability of admixtures is disperse, to disperse the hydrating cement grains is a key factor. Certain minerals found in various aggregate sources such as expansive clays have been found to rapidly absorb polycarboxylate type superplastizers, thus significantly reducing their effectiveness. If the length of retardation is less than expected, this may be due to an increase in the C3A content of the cement. 
Abnormally retarded set may be caused by a low C3A content or low cement reactivity, excessive admixture with retarding properties, high level of SCMs, or low temperature. The performance of concrete production produced with cements of abnormally low C3A and SO3 uh, content should be carefully observed when water reducing or set retarding admixtures are used. Any changes in the alkali content of the cement should alert the concrete producer to potential changes in admixture performance. Liquid admixtures can be stored in barrels or bulk, conta uh, bulk tanks or bulk tankers. Powdered admixtures can be placed in special storage bins and some are available in pre-measured plastic bags. Admixtures added to a truck mixer in the job site are often in plastic bag jugs or bags. Powdered admixtures such as certain plastizers or an admixture drum or barrel may be stored at the uh, project site. Most liquid chemical admixtures should not be allowed to freeze, therefore they should be stored in heated environments. Powdered admixtures are usually less sensitive to temperature re uh, restrictions, but may be sensitive to moisture. Liquid chemical admixtures are usually dispensed individually in the batch water by volumetric means. Liquid and powdered admixtures can be measured by mass but powdered admixtures should be measured by volume. In summary, we covered a variety of chemical admixtures, including air and training, water reducing, set controlling, and other admixtures. We ended the discussion with admixture compatibility and an overview of storage and dispensing of chemical admixtures. Please write down any questions you may have in your journals to bring and discuss in our next class.